think Koreans look at us as accomplished people, high achievers, and we have some kind of secret. And they want to know what is that secret? What can I do to also achieve and accomplish and win some Nobel Prizes? Uh, so I am a Jewish person here in Korea and uh, I have to say that it's fantastic to be a Jewish person in Korea. Number one, there's no animosity and actually many people know about Jews and they appreciate Jews and they are really happy when they hear, oh, you're Jewish, really? And they want to know things about being Jewish, and they want to know about Judaism. And, they, and I think the attitude, honestly, is that they see that Jews have accomplished a lot. Jews in general, because we value education, and we ask questions, and we are always curious to know. So we have learned a lot, and we have discovered a lot, and we invent a lot, and we create a lot, and we've become high achievers because we ask questions. We want to know. And so many Jewish people have become Nobel Prize winners and whatnot, and um, so I think Koreans look at us as accomplished people, high achievers, and that we have some kind of secret. And they want to know, what is that secret? What can I do to also achieve and accomplish and win some Nobel Prizes? Um, what is the community like? The community is much a transient one. I think, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but maybe there's five, between 500 and 1,000 Jews who actually only live here. Mm. Some are married to Koreans, some are working in the army, some are teaching. Uh, some are, have come here, started teaching and loved it and just kept living here. Um, but mostly um, it's a transient kind of, there's travelers coming through, business people coming through to work here who happen to be Jewish, they end up in Chabad, we get to know each other. Um, and so I think it's a very small community. There's only one actual Jewish center here, and that's the Chabad. And then there is the Israeli embassy, of course. Wait, in one... There's only one Jewish center. In, in Korea. In Korea. Okay. And that's here in Seoul. Got it. And when I lived in Busan, I was looking for something, and that's how I found the Israel House. Mm. And I didn't... But the Israel House is not run by Jews. It was actually established by a Jewish person who was living in Korea at the time. It might have even been the uh, uh, ambassador or something at the time but who established with a Christian group of Christians there um, who love Israel and Jews, they established the Israel House in Busan. And I went there thinking I'd be find some Jews. Well, there weren't any Jews, but I found some wonderful Christian people and a wonderful place where I actually went for my Jewish holidays to be in a Jewish environment. Oh, that's interesting. And even though it was set up and, and many Christians go there, I found a home there as well, as a Jew, when I couldn't come to Seoul to the only Jewish place. Mm -hmm. So we have the Jewish Chabad, which is which is Orthodox, religious, and for Jews only, not for, it, they only cater to Jewish people. And then you have the Israeli embassy, the Israeli consulate, which will help Jews, you know, as every consulate does, government office. And the Israel house down there, and the rest of it is, uh, I think there are some Jewish people that get together who don't want to be necessarily Orthodox followers. And there have been Hevrutas, Haveras, we call it Havara, a community of Jews who have gotten together just casually to celebrate holidays and maybe get together and observe Shabbat, Sabbath, uh, in a different way than a way that the Chabad presents it. But it's a very small, compact community and where we go as Jews just to feel that we are in a Jewish environment. So speaking of which, the community and the holidays, the food is important. And please enlighten me, I, I think um, 
what was it like um, to celebrate? Like, well, one of, I guess that's one of the hardest things about living in Korea is the food. Whereas most people come here for the food, Jewish people who are keeping kosher cannot eat the food here. If, you're, if you keep kosher, if you don't, you can eat anything. It's up to you, your choice. But uh, if you keep kosher, then most people go to the Chabad house, the Chabad center. They have a store there where you can buy kosher products uh, that they bring in from Israel and from America, from um, observant communities. And uh, they also will cook for you. And so you can be guaranteed to get kosher food. And many travelers who are trying to eat kosher food will go to the Chabad Center um, for that reason. Because or they will buy in a store and they'll just travel with their food. And they, if they're working here, they have, you know, it's hard. And it's, we don't want to insult Koreans because Koreans are always inviting us to eat. Eating is very important in Korea and it's very important in Judaism. Mm -hmm. But what you eat is also very important if you are, if that's something you are concerned about and about keeping. So Would you say it was very, I mean you were saying it was pretty difficult. It's but, difficult today um, still. I mean, you know, for a long time I ate rice and tuna fish. <laughs> Um, until I learned that I could, you know, but people would not eat meat here and things because it has to be, um, you know, there's certain rules that go along with keeping kosher. So uh, most people who do want to keep kosher might only go vegetarian and eat vegetables and grains or something like that just to stay which as kosher as possible. We do have a lot of dishes right. with vegetables. But it depends on what it's cooked in and blah blah blah. And if there's a lot of cooked in, you know, the same thing as pork or whatever. So somebody who's there's a lot I won't get into there's a lot of rules, but somebody who's really observant will not eat here. And I was really curious about that for sure. Yeah. But if you were to give any words of wisdom in addition to that for um, any Jewish folks stopping by Korea or thinking about visiting Korea, what would you say? I think it's really nice to get in contact with the Chabad house. It's not, many people think it's because it's Chabad religious that, you know, it's, uh, they're not interested in that because it's too, too um, orthodox, too observant, but they're very welcoming. And if you really want to get, you know, if you're really concerned about Jewish and also celebrating, observing holidays, it's fun. You're with the Jewish community and not everybody goes there as observant. You know, you're meeting lots of people. So if you're Jewish, do come to the Chabad house. Get to know the rabbi and his wife and all the kids are fabulous. Get some kosher food. You know, get some, go to the store. Go to the Israel house in Busan and meet Park uh, the minister there who's running it and, and be part of that. Go see it. They have a wonderful Holocaust room which is out of this world. Um, they got most of the materials from Yad Vashem in Israel. Um, and it's just, you know, also Koreans can relate to a Holocaust situation, a genocide. Um, so it's also for Koreans to go there and experience that. As there's a unity, there's a, a feeling of friendship that we share. Tell people you're Jewish. Experience that. And, and, and yeah. see if they talk about how we are talking Tell Koreans you're Jewish and see what kind of response you get. Engage in the conversation. It's really fun. Right. I was very curious to learn about that because I know that's a big part of your um, life mm -hmm. in general. So right. thank you for sharing today. Thank you for... Uh, if you have any questions about uh, being Jewish in Korea, yeah, leave us any questions on the comment section and hopefully we'll be able to uh, come back with more answers. So thank you Rahel for today's talk and I will see you next time. See you next time, the hit road. That. <laughs> <laughs> on your own, you can say Okay, we're going to say bye. Bye, bye. everyone. <laughs>